What's up, you guys? And welcome back to Tune In Tuesdays with your favorite gals, the H's. I'm Haley. And I'm Hannah. Let's get synced. <laughs> if you are in San Diego, sweet. If you're not, welcome back to another episode with you gals, the H's. We are so excited to hit up this two-part episode. This is part two of the Gabby Petito. And I'm no longer saying his first name, you guys. He is officially Dirty Laundry to me. <laughs> so that is what we're going to be. Yeah, he's the dirtiest. <laughs> um, Let's dive right into a vibe check. Haley, how's your vibe? Uh, hand the vibe is swell my way. I mean, no complaints. I had a little weekend trip to visit my bestie gal up in DC and long overdue, but much needed. And we bopped around some museums, did some nerdy girl things, Ooh. You know, got educated and just had us a little time out there. So all is and it's well. been so long since you've seen her. So long, too long. So long. Honestly, uh, I mean, it's been over a year, but I just think it's important to have friends that you can just pick right back up with, right? Like, Mm -hmm. we haven't seen each other in a year. We talk every once in a while on the phone and, like, text and things, but it's always, like, we never missed a moment, you know? You just pick right back up. So, so important, and it was just long overdue, so I finally got up there to visit, because now that I'm in the Durham area, it's only, like, a a three-and-a-half-hour drive, and decided it was time so yeah put away some time to do that and uh just got back uh, i guess sunday night in time for a little dinner and football and <laughs> here we are baby we're back so vibes are high all things considered yeah how's your how's your vibe hand my vibe is super high as well having i was just driving home today and i'm like i'm having a good ass day Love that. I mean, and it wasn't, there wasn't anything that happened mm-hmm. outside of the usual. Yeah. But we had a pretty low key weekend, actually. We just went and took the dogs to play over at my sister in law's house, hung out, watched some football, ate some burgers and dogs. Love a dog. Um, love a dog. Um, the Cardinal. Plug, plug. Ooh, plug. <laughs> we love her. And we've really just been hanging around, honestly. Just adult confessions, catching up on laundry, trying to, like, clean up. My poor husband has really been, like, just catching Cinderella, up on Cinderella. Cinderella. Laundry in. Dirty laundry. <laughs> yes. Yes. Literally all the dirty laundry this episode. <laughs> no, but everything is just going. It's like we're so tricked by the mornings right now. I, anybody else feeling that way? Like, you leave your house and you're like, muy frío. And yeah. then, like, afternoon, 1,000 degrees outside. It's uh, heat in the morning time and yeah. AC on full blast that right. Yeah, day. and at work, they've already transitioned to put the heat on. Mm-hmm. So, I'm dead. I'm sweating, dying. Just a, a permanent layer of moisture on my top epidermis because, I mean, it's blazing hot in there because it's still in the afternoons it's like still in the 80s i know high 80s for that matter and i wore a sweater uh, today i was like oh it i woke up i think i don't even think it was 60 degrees out i was like sweater weather yes, yes. and then i was walking to the car and i was like this was not it this was not the move this it was is like 80 degrees place. so i know i don't know how to dress this time of year so if you me see me in some mind your business <laughs> don't worry about it Y'all, if you are just now tuning into this episode of to, just to us for the first time, mm-hmm. welcome, welcome, welcome. You've picked a perfect one to dive into today. Um, we are going to set it off with a clink. Okay. So- <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I have not even been pre-gaming this episode, and I'm still feeling up in the air. All right, so I'm drinking something new this week, and you, you've you probably heard of them or have had them before. They are only available in ABC stores mm. near us. We're in North Carolina. So liquor stores, like ABC stores, we don't have, like, uh, mom-pop-owned liquor stores. You know, the state has to 
get their monies right. That's right. So this is a high noon. Mm-hmm. And for the longest time, I just thought they were seltzers. And, you know, I think it might be a seltzer, but what it actually says, you know, I'm a reader girl. Yes. I got to read the can. Um, and this flavor is watermelon. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a, I'm a toughie on some watermelon. But it is the vodka and soda. And this is actually Lisa Angel, Sam's mom. I'm not going to say she, like, forced me to let her buy this for me. But also, she doesn't take no for an answer never. when she pulls out that card. Never. So. <laughs> um, and she loves these. She was like, oh, my gosh, you've never had them. Like, you have to get them. Anyways, it says on the back, high noon, um, sun sips made with real vodka, real fruit juice, and sparkling water. The easy drinking, always socializing, great tasting, sun toasting, blue sky celebrating, memory oh. making, awesomeness in a can. Okay. Hard seltzer. Get out and enjoy. They lost me at the, you know, the the little little tail end at the end. Those two words, hard seltzer. I just don't love a seltzer. I try. But they did sell me at the part where there's no high fructose corn Ooh. syrup. Sugar. I was going to say corn sugar. Corn syrup. Corn sugar. And no artificial flavors. Best served cold. Thanks for the suggestee. Bestie. Yeah, we're going to pop her off. Oh. There's a telephone number on here. I should Wait, is this the first time you've had the watermelon or is this? Yes. Oh. It's cute. I like it. I really like the split. The contrast of the blue mm-hmm. and then like the moon on there. Yeah. Love that. Let's okay. pop that top. There we go. If I can, like I said, my nails are so long. I think I'm going to cut them down because they're all just like breaking on me because I do shit like this all day. <laughs> Not all day. <laughs> <laughs> all the weekend. Here we go. Let's hear some of sounds. Ooh. 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 She came with the force. <laughs> she sure did. Doesn't smell the best. Does not smell the best. Kind of smells like candy Ooh. though. Like a little like jelly the, or something? Like the poisony smell is going away, and now it's smelling like a candy. Ooh. Not too heavy on the carbonation the way that some seltzers are to the point where you're like, uh-uh. Right. Not comfy. Exactly. The taste is really good. I love to sniff and drink at the same time when I'm trying something new. Mm-hmm. Like smelling it as I'm drinking it. I like this. I would probably give it an 8 out of 10 oh. because I think this should be a tall boy. Ooh. I think it should be a bigger kid. So for the listeners, like, how sweet is she? You know, if you had to put um, her next to, like, a little white claw or something on, like, a scale of 1 to 10, what's the sweetness factor? Or is it more of, like, a flavored... Not as sweet. A flavored kind of water. Yeah. I would say it's more of a flavor type of sparkling water than it is, like, a sweet seltzer yeah, that's why I think I like it so much is it doesn't have, it's not very sweet. Normally with my first taste of something, I'm like, oh, yo, this is about to rumble the tumble. Oh, no. <laughs> not the But flux. like this is not. Yeah, right? <laughs> I'll probably still have the flux, but <laughs> there's no added sugar. <laughs> that's just almost 30 for you. Gluten-free, no added sugar. And I mean, I, I, I really enjoy this. All right. I'll have to try that. Not super sweet. Yeah, grab you some. I know they had watermelon and uh, Lisa swears by the black cherry. She's a black like, cherry gal. I think she loves the black cherry. I could be wrong about like if they have this or not, but I'm pretty confident we looked there. We went there specifically looking for the black cherry, but she was like, watermelon will do. I'm getting some. You're getting some. And I said, I'm getting yes. some. Yeah. Love that. So, what are you sipping on? Oh, you know, really been enjoying just some wine lately. I'm uh, such a lightweight these days that I can have like a glass of wine. I'm just just the perfect amount of like chilled, you know? I don't know. Yeah. But this is a Pinot Noir Rosé. It is beautiful. From Trader Joe's. Ooh, it's just like a yes. little cute $6 bottle, which it was like a fan favorite. You know how they put like the little... Mm-hmm. illustrations next to their very popular items and it was like fan yeah. fave and i just love a good cheap bottle of wine um love that. my palate doesn't know what expensive wine tastes like yet so we're gonna keep it that way <laughs> i don't <laughs> i don't think it's the palate that knows i think it's really more so like the hangover mm. that lets you know <laughs> that's true but she's pretty good if you like a dry rosé this is like the the driest of the dry Love um, that, and I've been I'm enjoying it. She's very very tasty. So love that, and it and it paired well with your curry for. Oh yes, she was 
We saw just that. Just melding on the, the palette so, so nicely. Mmm. I love that. All right, y'all. So where we left off this last time, you know we have to get into it, yeah. Because we are just constantly on edge mm. with this man's. Um, we're really sick of his shit, to be quite frank. We're ready just to see him by behind bars. We're ready to see him detained by police and taken away forever. Yep. So that this doesn't happen to another poor soul. But like we mentioned in the last episode, referring to the Gabby Petito investigation along with other missing individuals, people are missing every single day Mm -hmm. all over the globe. This isn't just like zoned in on the United States. We're talking all over the globe, ranging in all ages. Sex does not matter. Every like there's tons of people missing. This has just been shared by so many people around um, the world and maybe even the I'm, maybe I'm just speaking for the United States. I don't know if other places in the world are seeing anything about Gabby Petito. I'm going to go ahead and take that mm-hmm. back. However, we do have listeners in 16 other countries. So why don't you guys let us know? Yeah. This. <laughs> Essentially, this is not to dampen the seriousness of any other missing child case out there. If anything, we wish and hope that every single case that happened that was like this would blow up. And I think a lot of people are a little irritated with the fact that this white, blonde-headed gal is getting so much publicity. But I honestly think it's a great thing. We're finally starting to have the conversation of why is this not happening for every single missing child? And the answer is, I don't know, but it should and um, we're choosing to tune in onto this case because it is just twisted and turned from beginning to end, and we want justice. Mm-hmm. Not just for Gabby, but like we said, any missing child out there, we would love mm-hmm. justice for you as well, and we are following this case because it's hard not to when you see something that is so just wrong, <laughs> and mm-hmm. um, you get invested, and you want justice and the darkness to be brought to light, and um, yeah, we've enjoyed following along because we think that every step and every little piece of evidence that there is will get us just that much closer to having an answer mm-hmm. and hopefully her family getting some closure. And yeah, um, they deserve that. We included in our little epi description graphic the hotline for domestic violence, or if you're in an emergency situation. Please, please, please do not hesitate to call the hotline, tell somebody, do something before it is too late. But we just wanted to preface with justice is required. Yes, justice is required. And that hotline number is 1-800-799-7233 or 1-800-799-SAFE. Or you can reach them at 1-800-787-3224. Save those numbers, plug them, not necessarily you might need them, but maybe you need to pass it along. That's why we're doing this. There is somebody probably close to you in some some sense of the word that could benefit from having this number handy, whether it's they want to pass it along to somebody that they know needs it. So where we left off, we left you guys last analyzing the timeline of this case and we had to shut it down at September 1st. We it was just so much information mm-hmm. and a lot has happened since then that it would have been a 2-hour episode and ugh, listen, <laughs> you guys, we're not going to do that to you. However, I feel, well actually, I speak for both of us when we say this. We feel as though Gabby, you know, was last alive around the 27th ish mm-hmm. somewhere around that time time frame so guys we're sitting at a month that since she's been passed away and dirty laundry is just still out there running around we forgot to include in our timeline from the last episode on the 29th he was actually spotted and picked up by local residents and as a hitchhiker and it appears as though he was somewhere you know between like 16 to 20 ish minutes from like where the van was mm-hmm. at that time and that was on the 29th so um, we we're just gonna jump right into the first yeah september 1st like hannah mentioned is where we left off and a lot has happened since then so we are just going to dive in and kind of back up a little bit 
and start with when dirty laundry returns home. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of don't really have much going on after, you know, the 29th, the last week of August, but September 1st comes and Dirty Laundry is riding that van home solo dolo, no Gabby in tow, and he is making his way back to Florida mm-hmm. where his family and Gabby had once lived with them in their home, and we know that he was on his way because he was spotted on the interstate Mm -hmm. around 10 26 in the morning in the white van that they had taken on their excursion and apparently the van you know was returned there were some items that eventually were taken by police to be kind of collected and rummaged through but He's home, right? He's come from Mm -hmm. what we last knew where he was, was somewhere in Yellowstone, around Yellowstone National Park. So that's pretty much a nonstop drive. If he was seen on the 29th and then he got back on the 1st, I mean, I'm not... Yeah, that's tough. That's, um, I mean, you're talking like... I don't even know. That's yeah, rough. Yeah, there's... I'm not sure how far it is from Yellowstone to, you know, Florida, but I imagine it's it's mm-hmm. quite the drive. So he must have yeah. pretty much been powering through nonstop on the 30th, 31st, and finally arrives home on the 1st. Mm-hmm. And... It's very weird because there's a little bit of a lapse in the timeline if you are following along on Where's Gabby or we have also found a very excellent timeline that kind of describes the events um, that CNN has. And not much really is said between September 1st and September 11th. And that's because, well, no one knew she was missing. Right. Because... Right, right, right. Because according to everybody else... Besides Dirty Laundry's parents, they were the only people who didn't suspect that they weren't together. Right. Like, physically together out west. (laughs) Yeah, so nothing was said. I mean, at this point, I don't even think that her mom has said that she was missing. Mm -mm. I, you know, they are just, uh, there's nothing, which is red flag number one. (laughs) If your son were to come home without the fiance, who lives there? Right. The first thing you're doing is, where's Gabby? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Asking some questions. And if you have any moral compass whatsoever, you're doing something. You're asking questions. You are calling mm-hmm. the parents. You are informing them. Doing some. Yeah. Something. You're not staying quiet. But Han, let them know um, some of the events that kind of actually transpire between the 1st yeah. and the 11th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Brian gets home. Oh, Dirty gets home on the 1st. I vowed to never call him that again. My, you know, like, no, just can't. So he gets home on the first and like Haley said in the timeline, it's just kind of radio silence. Well, since then, you know, a part of the reason why this case has been so big, because it is literally the public working together on these social platforms, Mm -hmm. you guys, like. I normally hate and bash on social media. I have never been more thankful for social media in my life because TikTok, as previously stated, has like single handedly like solved this. Literally. But, you know, there's other resources as well. And allegedly stated that their neighbor had recognized or seen that the laundries had purchased a new tow along camper for their truck. Mm -hmm. It was white. You can see it. There's images of it. If you want to just type in like laundry camper, like you'll see it. And the neighbor, actually two neighbors, a husband and wife said that they had seen the laundries leaving to go out of town for a camping trip, dirty included. Mm. (laughs) Dirty Brian included. Dirty in tow. Actually, I like dirty. Dirty in tow. And this was about a week after his return. So we're thinking maybe the 9th. Thursday the 9th-ish, mm-hmm. um, or maybe the 10th, and the neighbors said that they were gone for that weekend. Now, that weekend was the 10th, Friday being the 10th, Saturday the 11th, and Sunday the 12th. Um, and that's where our timeline, that gap, picks back up on the 11th because that is a big day. Haley, what happened on that day? So, Brian returned on the 1st. Everything's hunky-dory, as Hannah mentioned. Parents don't say a damn thing. Don't alert anybody. (laughs) Don't say anything. 
Nothing. Yeah, what the hell? I'm going to pause right there because I know that if I were living with my fiance's parents in their home Mm -hmm. and had for quite some time, they better be concerned as to where I am. 100%. And vice versa. Like, I would be I would be appalled if my parents were not concerned the least bit about where my fiance was. Right. I mean, it just furthers our theory. The parents are in right. on it. Like they Right, it seems that way. But then it's kind of like you think about it and you're like, well, what if he gave them some shit story of like, oh, we got in this big fight and she just went back home to New York? Because she's from New York. Mm-hmm. She's not from Florida. Mm-hmm. So it's not so far fetched. For him to have said that, but... True. For all we know, he fed his parents a lie. Yeah. It's very possible possible. that he was like, oh, I don't know. I mean, we got into a little bit of an argument. She's just spending some time with her family. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm Mm-hmm. Whatever, whatever. But, um, you know, you would have thought he probably would have mentioned that before. And maybe he did. We don't know. None of them are speaking, as you remember, to anyone. Right. Instead, finally, the silence is broken around September 11th because Gabby's mom is like, what the fuck? Where's my baby? Where's my daughter? Reports Mm -hmm. her missing because she has not heard from her. And if you remember the last two texts that she actually received from her, which I believe were around the 27th or 25th, I want to say. She doesn't even now believe that they were actually sent by her daughter. Correct. So at this point, I mean, almost two weeks have passed. I'd be freaking out Mm -hmm. and september 11th like i mentioned came along and her parents are like where is our daughter Mm -hmm. and so northport authorities in florida run up to dirty laundry's home home house (laughs) wasn't sure Mm -hmm. (laughs) and they asked to speak to him and they were essentially just like consult our attorney i'm sorry what you already have an attorney is why do you get an attorney if you're innocent that's the thing We already know he's not innocent. That's why the reason we're just analyzing this whole situation. Yeah, so he said, speak with the attorney. And it is very alarming that he already has an attorney at this point. But going back to that little sneaky trip when he came home, moving stuff out of the the house to the little unit, Mm -hmm. I think he had told his parents something then or put a little bug in their ear and they secured the attorney then. Right. I mean, it just seems very odd that obviously a conversation has transpired, right? To where they're like, if anyone comes knocking or looking or suspecting anything, hand Uh them over to the attorney. I mean, that's just not like a normal reaction. My first reaction would be, what do you mean she's missing? You know, like, Mm -hmm. (laughs) or um, no, my son doesn't have anything to do with it. I would be in immediate denial. I would not be like, yeah, consult my attorney. Huh? I mean, that you're just putting up the defense immediately. Immediate defense. Right. Um, the 14th. Mm-hmm. On Tuesday the 14th, three days after she was reporting missing by her parents, this was the day homeboys jumped in the woods. This was when Laundry mm. then became a person of interest of missing sort. That is all in finger quotes because, you guys, he was hiding. There is a big difference between missing and hiding. Because on the 14th, Going back to the Where's Gabby, that is when the possible subpoena was dropped off and Laundry's lawyer released a statement. The vehicle was processed by police. And that was the same day that Laundry was listed as a person of interest. Yeah, because I mean, who else? Who else? So on the 14th, he just like dips out. That's what he does. The next day, the 15th, September 15th, her dad heads out to her, excuse me, her stepfather heads out to Wyoming to help with the search, which what lengths do you not go to for your kids? You know, like the thought, I'm not, I'm not a mom, but the thought of one day having a child Mm -hmm. and nobody can locate that child. You better believe my ass is on the next flight to wherever I got to go. I'm going to be searching high and low, doing any and everything that I possibly can. Right, Um, exactly. And kind of in that next few days following the 15th and the 16th, uh, various statements mm -hmm. were made from, I believe, even Brian's sister and the Mm -hmm. Petito family specifically is just like crying out for help. Like, please, if you have any decency left or if you have anything, just tell us if we're looking in the right place. Like, give us something. We just want to find our daughter. We want to make sure she's alive. They are just doing anything and everything they can. 
And they're just asking for anyone to come forward with any kind Mm -hmm. of information that might be out there. And, you know, they're like, we haven't been able to sleep, eat. Our lives are falling apart. Whatever you have at this point is better than nothing. Because I know, you know, they say after 48 hours is the best time that they will find someone alive after that mm-hmm. i think that the chances of actually them being alive drops yeah significantly significantly mm-hmm. i don't know what mm-hmm. percentage it is but you probably did so yeah and also on the 16th i just would like to add that that was when the body cam footage from the august 12th incident was released yeah so at this point you know here we are like four or five days after they report her daughter missing they are seeing on, I mean, they're seeing it at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, unfold. Everybody saw it yep. unfold um, all over the news, all over social media. And they are seeing their daughter in an uncomfortable situation with her fiance. And now she's missing. I mean, I think it kind of only confirms to them that their suspect is, in fact, the correct suspect right and to rewind just a little bit if you haven't listened to part one our gal gabby is distraught in this video Mm -hmm. she's really having a panic attack so it it is not that she is upset she is literally unconsolable just Mm -hmm. crying heaving so hard that i mean it's she's almost hard to understand or comprehend because she is just so emotional at that moment but it, i think it really starts to click for brian's family and also just the rest of america who at this point is invested in this case because gabby is an influencer she's a vlogger mm-hmm. they're probably wondering where's the content <laughs> mm-hmm. and now this has come out into the news and they see this footage people are enraged and they start mm-hmm. to go nuts i really think this is when it like really hits the fan and everyone on yeah. tiktok and all the other social media platforms are just what right. is going on and september 17th is when the police break into the dirty laundry house yep because that is the day that the laundries reported Brian is missing. Mm-hmm. How is that? <laughs> this whole this whole part right here has really got me fucked up, mm-hmm. to say the very least. Because he dips out. We know he dips out on the 14th. Because that is the last time that they had claimed to see him. Mm-hmm. Blah, 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 blah. They knew where he was going because he stated to them that he was going to hike the nature reserve, a 25,000 acre area, I guess you could say. And at what point to them did they think, hmm, our son hasn't come home. Hmm, he's in suspect. Hmm, I'll wait another few days to to report him missing because they did not say anything until the 17th that he was missing and he hadn't come home for days and authorities went to his vehicle at the nature reserve and there was a note left on it or i'm sorry his parents went to his vehicle at the nature reserve and there was a note on it and they did that thursday and then they reported him missing on friday do we know what the note says don't know what the note says interesting so (laughs) It just seems strange to me that they're calling out, calling out, asking for all this help again on the 16th. And they've been trying to have conversations, you know, the Petito family Mm -hmm. to the laundry family. Mm -hmm. been trying to get to them. And they reach out to them. And on the 16th, it says that the Petito family refused to answer. Or, I'm sorry. The laundry family refused to answer any of the Petito's questions. So, you know your son's missing or gone at this point and you're refusing to answer you're covering he's getting away he's doing something you're staying quiet long enough that he can make it somewhere and it's just Mm -hmm. this is all distraction right big time they probably baited them to this house they had time to do whatever they wanted to do get rid of anything sketchy get their son enough time to get out of the immediate area or get wherever he can be safe whether that's with a friend a family member or somewhere in nature people are convinced this man is out here camping or something which i'm Mm -hmm. entirely convinced of where is the family camper is it still at their house that's a great question that is a great question and they just like throw his ass over the border and say here's a camper go live yeah i 
I think there is some speculation he may be in Mexico, um, but... A l- Canada? Like, he's somewhere. He had enough time to fled. I mean, you can get to a lot of different places in 24 hours if you really, really need to. So, yeah. again, on the 17th, basically, they kick off the search for Brian now. I mean, he's he's missing. He's a suspect. But at this point in time, I believe that Brian either went missing, one, because he knows the truth of what happened. Right. He killed this girl. And... He knows if he's found, he will spend the rest of his life in jail behind bars. So this is his last ditch effort to get away or to just buy more time to, you know, hopefully come up with an alibi or some kind of reason why he did not report his fiance missing. But he's gone. And Mm -hmm. now, even till today, they are still on the search for old Brian. But Hannah, take us into September 18th. Okay, so on the 18th, um, Northport authorities, they are conducting a search at the Carlton Reserve, mm-hmm. which is the nature area, um, which I had seen that it was 25,000 acres. Mm-hmm. I don't know how that equates to mileage, but it does state that there were 80 miles of hiking trails um, in this area of Florida. I also want to put out there that I've seen multiple sources where Laundry's friends have reached out and have stated that they wouldn't be surprised of any sort if Laundry was just out there living off the land because he's, in fact, done it before. Mm-hmm. Um, it was stated that he spent, like, three months. How long? Like, yeah, three months just... On, like, the Appalachian like, Trail or something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he thinks very highly of himself, according to close sources, I guess, that he could survive out in the middle of nowhere. So they have tons of law enforcement officers out there, local agencies, FBI. Now they're searching for laundry, which it makes me really upset to even think that they're spending a second looking for him. I know that whatever they have to, they have to find him. I'm, I'm happy that they are looking for him. But it's just kind of like at this time, we hadn't found Gabby. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of frustrating because it's like, screw you, Brian. Like, why are you even trying to take this from her being missing to your being missing now that you're being searched for? No, didn't love that at all. Wasn't a fan Um, of myself. Yeah. And something that really just, just stood out to me is the police spokesperson says, at the news conference, adding that Laundry has an, um, an enormous amount of pressure on him to provide answers to what is going on. you damn right. Yep. you damn right. And the FBI announces that they are going to begin conducting ground surveys in Grand Teton National Park that are relevant to the area mm-hmm. of her disappearance. Mm-hmm. And the National Park, Grand Teton National Park, is, you know, on this date of the 18th is where Petito is believed to have been before her last communication with her family. Right. So September 19th is the day that they are out looking for Gabby. They are all hands on deck. FBI is involved. Local authorities in the area involved. Everyone, I mean, and their mom is watching this case at this point. Where is Gabby? Right. So earlier that morning on the 19th, some footage had started to circulate from a couple that was actually, um, you know, touring the area and going through the national park very soon around the time that Gabby had gone missing, supposedly. And it just so happened that they captured footage of a white van that is essentially identical to Gabby's. If you go, like I said, just go onto YouTube and type in couple finds Gabby Petito's van or something to that effect. I'm convinced this is their car. In the video, you see a white van that has bumper stickers in the exact same place as the car that they have posted all over their Instagram pages. You see a hat on the dashboard that looks just like a hat that she has worn in previous photos on her Instagram and other social media platforms. There's a pair of sandals by the rear of the vehicle. And what we later discover is there may even be a gun involved. You know, more on that in a second. It is actually the same day that this video footage comes about that they find remains. Now, the exact location of the remains that were found, I do not have facts 
behind this, but I do believe it was actually near where this van was seen in the video surveillance that this couple provided. And they find remains. Everyone is just shook. I mm-hmm. thought they would find her rather quickly, to be honest, but I did not expect it to be pretty much 48 hours after they began looking for her officially. But at this point, it was just speculation that it was her. Press comes out the statement basically saying, you know, the remains appear to be very similar to Gabby's. And mm-hmm. just, you know getting into a little bit more on the 20th still we are not told whether or not this is in fact her body but the parents of brian i'm sorry dirty laundry (laughs) are questioned (laughs) at their home by the fbi right a search warrant has been issued because now they're like okay we found remains your son is missing this is fishy and he's a suspect we're checking out the house Mm -hmm. and The police basically end the day by saying that they searched um, the nature reserve where they had believed that Brian might be, and nothing really came up, right? Mm -hmm. So another day has passed, and the 21st is finally when we get some clarification that this is, in fact, Gabby's body. Yeah. She's been murdered is the cause of death. To this day, we do not know what happened, why she was killed, how she was killed, when she was killed. Mm-hmm. They still have not provided any kind of autopsy mm-hmm. evidence to any of those questions. We just know she was murdered. Right. Yeah, they deemed it as a homicide at that point. And when you have your suspect of interest just missing, that's fishy. Um, September 23rd really sparked my interest because... Authorities are still on their search for laundry at the Carlton Reserve. The FBI announces that there has been a U.S. District Court of Wyoming issued a federal arrest warrant for Brian, and it was the indictment of the use of an unauthorized device. So when I first saw that charge, I was like, when I don't frequent breaking the law, Mm -hmm. anyways. Actually, I never break the law, unless it's like spit my gum out. (laughs) But... I looked into that a bit more, and unauthorized devices is anything lost, stolen. So, like, if you steal somebody's debit card, if you steal somebody's phone, if you have a burner phone, if you have, you know, identity fraud, if you are anything of that sort can be deemed as unauthorized devices. Um, And it was related to activities after Petito's death. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they have that. The warrant pull that for law enforcement, you know, that gets them in. They can conduct this investigation a bit deeper. And they are still saying we don't know where his current whereabouts are Mm -hmm. at this point. But Laundry is suspected of using a debit card and pen for accounts that don't belong to him for charges of more than $1,000 sometime between August 30th and September 1st, according to the warrant that's fucked up so basically this was after she had passed at this point we know she had passed Mm -hmm. he had done this on august 30th and september 1st pulled this money out of her account and her body is just laying in a remote area in grand teton national park somewhere he's adding he's adding songs on his spotify he's adding playlists taking money out of her account so That just did not rub me the right way. Because when I first saw it, I was like, unauthorized device. Like, oh, my God. Like, he was on her phone. Like, Mm -hmm. he was doing this, that. I thought that they were able to prove that somehow. Mm -hmm. Um, Which, to this day, they still do not have either one of their phones, which I find mind-boggling. I bet he dumped them somewhere. They're somewhere, right? Or destroyed them. Or, I mean, at that point, your phone is just a GPS to your location, right? So... I'm going to bet that phone is gone. It's been destroyed. Something happened to it. And I'm sure more evidence will come out about when the, you know, the coordinates were last found. Because the FBI can access right. that kind of stuff. But right. if he was smart at all, had a single brain cell, would not have that phone on him in any capacity. It's gone. It's been gone. It's gone. Her phone's also I mean, gone. it's just wild to me. Because, I mean, on the 29th, though, it was like... I'm pretty sure he sent a text on the 29th that said, no service in Yellowstone or Yosemite, sorry. 
in California, Yosemite. And so it was like he's pulling money out of her account on the 29th and he's driving home and he's adding songs on his. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, lots has kind of happened behind the scenes. To be honest, the media coverage of this case has not necessarily been hush hush, but there have not been a ton of breaking headlines. However, it's all been the same reporting information, it seems like. However, TikTok FBI has been at work, honey. (laughs) They don't stop. They do not sleep. Now, I have to be... All of y'all are underpaid and overworked out here. (laughs) And I have to be transparent. I don't have a TikTok, but I see everything that creeps on to Instagram. And I, you know, Mm -hmm. have friends that send me things surrounding this case. And um, just some stories have kind of popped out of the woodwork. All speculation at this point of course because a lot of facts have not come out now just to kind of cover a few of the tiktok rumors for you listeners that have been invested and maybe have missed a few of them um there's some speculation out there that brian's mother has started a fake instagram account for gabby um this this Mm -hmm. account it's not funny it's like disgusting it is it's laughable because it's like what the fuck? What, what is wrong what with you? What is wrong with you? Exactly. But it is speculation that she started a account um, that was something similar to her existing Instagram, which Gabby would never... Cre- well, I'm not going to say that she would and I never knew her, but no one in their right mind is going to create a fake Instagram to say that they're alive. They're going to use their actual Instagram. You know what I'm saying? With her actual followers. So, you know, this account starts posting please leave brian's family alone he had nothing to do with this very very fishy very very sus and it's speculation that his mom is actually behind the account trying to put something out there as a distraction or to try and get the attention off the family look like Mm -hmm. let's be honest that ship has sailed (laughs) that ship has long gone and i believe it was on the 25th i don't quote me on the day but there have been some things surface as i just mentioned briefly a few minutes ago um there may have been a gun involved Mm -hmm. now this is where it gets a little hairy for me because if you remember in our last episode we mentioned that there was a couple that was murdered conveniently around the same time Crystal and Kylie. Crystal and Kylie. Right around the same time that Dirty Laundry and Gabby were in the area. And in fact, they had stopped at the store that I believe Crystal worked at. And Mm -hmm. an argument ensued. And I believe that she witnessed it from what has been reported. So from what we know, they were shot and killed. So mm-hmm. there's been some pictures that have come about, a, a Polaroid, I believe, that some of them, again, the, the TikTok FBI doesn't sleep. They found a Polaroid of Gabby holding a gun. And I do believe it has come out in the actual press, <laughs> not the TikTok yeah. press, that <laughs> there were what they suspect to be gunshots around where her body was found. So. Which, what the hell is that? Like, in my mind, I'm like, is the body laying there and he, like, sh- is shooting at the ground around it? Is that what that means? Because I'm like... Yeah, it's it's very fishy. Again, they haven't said how she died. Or, like, gunshots in the air. People heard it. I know that sounds kind of dumb. Like... Right. I'm just trying to understand, like, is it... And again, I guess we won't know until they come out in the autopsy and actually kind of confirm what is going on or how they know it's a homicide. But there is some evidence out there that there may have, in fact, been a gun involved. And you can look it up for yourself in this Polaroid picture. She's Mm -hmm. holding a gun. Like, I... There's really no denying it. Is it real? Right. Is it fake? Not really sure. I've seen it. We won't yeah. know. But some of the rumors that are floating around at the moment, um, the most breaking news we have is that DOG baby is on this case like fly. Oh, he said. Oh shit. He said bang bang bang. <laughs> Dog bounty hunter is on this. He is banging on the laundry's door just the way that we need him to be. And first of all, I didn't even know this man was still alive. I'm so impressed. <laughs> he looks the exact same. Like, how's an He literally bit. fears no man. Yeah. And probably very few women. So he said, bang, bang, dirty laundry parents. I'm on to you. And just, just a reminder, 
Nothing from the laundries at all. Nothing. Not a peep out the zipper. You know, nothing. They no, have- I hope they're eating. I hope they're eating dog food while they're with these agents who's taking them into questioning. Oh, we'll feed them. Yeah, we're going to make sure they're fed. Dog food. Ugh. It's edible. It's still humane. We're still feeding you. We're allowed to feed. I mean, that's what I wish. Because at the end of the day, they're going to be sitting right behind bars. You're all, you're, there's, you they cannot are convince me. accomplices at this point. That they don't know. They're accomplices they know. at this point. You cannot tell me that your son has you so convinced for 10 days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you could have asked so many questions and if he met you with absolutely no answers you know he's guilty you knew he was guilty yeah. you gave him time yeah. to get away you reported him missing conveniently 48 hours after he actually went missing <laughs> and mm-hmm. you are buying time so lots of speculation in the last couple of days and it's just so crazy because so i swear fun. every 30 minutes it's like something else mm-hmm. Has been discovered. Something new. Come- I know. Like, I saw something the other day where it was, like, there was a, a shaky, like, tip-off text mm-hmm. because her mom or something was, like, like that's weird because she referred to her grandfather by his first name in a text on August 27th, mm-hmm. y'all. The 27th. So, it was, like... I mean, if you are the type of person you always call your grandparents by the name, like, it, it's odd when you don't. So, like, your parents notice those things. Or, like, people notice those things. Absolutely. Um, right. So, that was just interesting. Like, Haley said, there's just been, like, shaky tidbits of information that aren't necessarily helpful in the search to finding his bitch ass. But they are interesting in the fact that just confirms what we already know exactly. as speculators. Um, I will say that God rest her soul, um, her celebration of life was actually yesterday and I'm, you know, it's, it's so heartbreaking and sad, but I think there's a bit of peace for her family Mm -hmm. to have been able to, to do that rather than just constant wonder for the rest of their lives. Like, where is she? Mm Mm-hmm. I'm content with the fact that they were able to do that for her, even though it sucks. Like, I hate that I'm even phrasing it like that because they shouldn't have to be doing mm-hmm. that to their 22-year-old daughter. I I have to say that it, as much as we would have liked to see Gabby alive, I am happy that they did in some way receive the closure of knowing that mm-hmm. now she is in a much better place, I have to imagine. And there are parents out there that... Their child has been missing for years, and they never get an answer. Until justice is served, you know, we will be keeping you guys updated. I don't know, Han, if we're going to do another episode, but we will be doing updates momentarily. Yeah, check-ins, updates, just kind of like catch us up to speed, you know, here and there, just little quick snip. You know, we will be announcing when the laundry comes clean, honey. Mm -hmm. You know we will. He better, I mean, if it were my parents, he better hope and pray to God that the FBI finds him before somebody's parents could potentially find him. Amen, amen. Guys, if you enjoyed our little synced goes true crime... (laughs) Let us know. We've actually had some of you reach out and say that you were enjoying last week's episode and maybe it's something we'll do a little bit more of in the future if it is something you like. But Mm -hmm. in the meantime, you already know, venture over to Apple Podcasts if you haven't already. Leave us some stars, a little review, and check out our Instagram. Lots of goodies there. We post tons of things, motivational things. Just cute little stuff that we're interested in from some local artists, and yeah. If you got some time to spend, like Haley was saying, hit that link in our bio, our link tree. It's going to take you to all of our streaming platforms. You can listen on any platform that you have readily available on your smartphone device, um, along with just some other tidbits in there, just links to things we love and there's an anonymous advice box in there not just to get advice but if you have any thoughts or opinions surrounding any of the topics we talk talk about in any of our episodes that's another way to link up with us it is anonymous we do not see who sends those um typically we share those on episodes when we don't want our listeners to be exposed (laughs) link up with us in some form or fashion and we'll hit you next time but thanks for joining us on our Tune in Tuesday. We out. Peace.